TRS New User Training, TRS Functionality Part 2. Look below in YouTube Details section for chapters. My name is Andrew Barr, the Payroll Services TRS Administrator. To complete training, you must complete the TRS Compliance and Policy Part 1, the TRS Functionality Part 2, the TRS Quiz, you must pass with a passing grade, and TRS Access Request Form submitted to timerep at gbu.edu. Note, this training will cover edit and approval access. Your access level will reflect what is requested on your TRS Access Form. Additional resources for training can be found in the Employee Handbook at hrgbu.edu slash compensation. On the Benefits Time Off System, can be found at benefits.gb.edu, Time Off Learning Opportunities, the Payroll Website, payroll.gb.edu, Payroll Tip Sheets, which cover almost all pieces of this training, can be found at payroll.gb.edu slash TRS Instructions, Payroll Services YouTube Channel, where you can find employee training videos and additional timekeeper training videos. TRS New User Training will cover logging into Kronos in Kronos Timekeeping Function and Settings. Logging into Kronos. The link to log into Kronos is go.gwu.edu slash TRS. Your username will be the official GW NetID, which is part of the email that proceeds at gwu.edu. Your username must be all lowercase. The password is GW is your GW email password. Kronos Navigator and Workspace. Manager Navigator. When logging in, this is what your navigator looks like. And we'll go over the pieces. At the very top, you will see Manage My Department. And that is your active bar. It displays your active workspaces. Click the title to bring a workspace into focus. And your Manage My Department is your primary workspace in default. Workspace displays one or more widgets and the related items pane. Alerts. Links which appear as icons enabling you to quickly view exceptions, time off, and delegation alerts. Your name and sign out. Identifies user and a link to log out of Navigator. Additional genies. Access additional genies by selecting the arrow next to the hour summary, which is your default genie when logging in. This will bring up a list of additional genies. Workspace content. Some workspaces allow you to choose a content as time period and set of employees to use in all widgets where they apply. If needed, change the selections and click the synchronize icon. Related items pane. Includes one or more additional widgets for less common tasks. The related items pane contains different widgets for each workspace. Workspace toolbar. We will go from left to right. Select all rows lets you select all employees in a genie. Column selection lets you remove columns you do not want to see. Filter lets you search on selected genie rows. People. Shows employee info such as accrual info, primary job info, and meal break settings. Timekeeping is used to add or remove punch punches that replicates TRS. Approval button is used to approve from the genie. Schedule can be used for bi-weekly exempt employees. Refresh will refresh the data on the genie. Share gives options to print Genie or export Genie in Excel or CVS format. And GoTo allows access to other widgets that are available for the same selection of employees. You do not have to select employees in the time period each time you change widgets. Workspace content. On your workspace, you have Genies, time periods, and the hyperfines that you can change the context. Under your genies, your default genie is our summary. The other available genies are quick sign, which allows you to search for employees, manager approval, which displays 
the manager that has approved the time card. Reconcile time card for payroll is used if you have work schedules. Accrual reporting period shows time off balances. Sign off issues is a quick view of exceptions and unapproved time cards. Reconcile time card is a genie for departments that use work schedules. Employee hours by week shows an overtime column, so it's good for people who have international students or if you're tracking overtime. Pay period close, like our summary, has a field showing if time card is signed off. An IS summary it shows employee username and an email address info if you need that information. Time periods. Your default time period is previous pay period. That's where you need to be when you are approving time. But additional time periods are current pay period, next pay period, current schedule pay period displays a week format instead of the two week format employees are clocking in and out for. Previous schedule period displays a week format which is the last scheduled week employees were clocking in and out for. And you have the next scheduled period, which also displays the weekly hours. Other pre-scheduled dates from Kronos are week to date, last week, yesterday, today, yesterday plus six days, and the last 30 days. If there is a date period that you do not see, you can always select the calendar button and select the range of dates. Hyperfines. Your default hyperfine is all home biweekly, which will show you all your biweekly employees. Additional hyperfines are all home monthly, shows you all monthly paid employees. All home and transferred in employees will show you biweekly and monthly employees. And all home term shows anyone that has been terminated in the TRS. Click the refresh on the tab to refresh your workspace settings. Kronos Terms. EW is an abbreviation for bi-weekly paid employee. MO is an abbreviation for monthly paid employee. Payroll represents the pay class of an employee such as union, temp, exempt, regular, non-exempt. Secondary job is a bi-weekly employees with more than one position have one labeled as primary and all others are labeled as secondary. Transfer. All secondary jobs have to transfer their time to their secondary positions when clocking, so secondary timekeepers can see them on their genies. Accrual profile. Used to calculate employees' time off. Approved time card. Approvals are made by the department's designated timekeeper with approval access. Once the time card is approved, Kronos knows the time is ready to be processed and picks that time up in the time file to be processed. Sign off. Sign offs are made by the Kronos administrator. The system will sign off and freeze all time cards that have an approval with no missed punches. Signed off time will be included in the time file for processing. Audits. The audits widget lets you review any edit made to the employee's time card. Select Go To button, select Audits. The user column displays the phone number used to clock or the username for edited punches. Reviewing non-exempt time card. Accessing the time card. Select Employee and double click to access the time card. To select multiple employees, Select Employees, select Go To, select Time Cards. The Time Card will open up in an additional tab. The top of the Time Card. You will see a Quick Actions button which allows you to mark and fix exceptions. There is a View button which allows you to only see exceptions. Approve Time Card allows you to approve or remove a time card approval. Print Time Card allows you to print time. Refresh allows you to refresh the time card. Calculate Totals allows you to check total impacted by your edits before saving the data. 
Complete the edits within the tiny card and click Calculate Totals. Select Refresh to roll back or Save to move forward. Save to apply changes will appear orange when there are changes to be saved. And Go To allows access to other widgets available. Calendar button allows date range entry. You can search back 10 years on employee records. Bottom of the time card toolbar. At the bottom of the time card, you will see four tabs, totals, accruals, audits, historical corrections. Under totals, you can use this to check your total labor level charge for your department. Under accruals, you can check your time off accruals and the totals. If you feel that there's something wrong, always contact benefits at timeoff at gbu.edu. Audit is used to check your audits made on the time card. Again, this checks all audits. You can check them here or in the audits widget that we just went over. Historical corrections. We will cover historical corrections, but historical corrections is when you can edit or update time off when the time card has been signed off and you can see any time off added when the time card has been signed off on the historical corrections tab. Employee info box. Right click on the employee's name on the genie to display an info box and action buttons. The box also gives you options to add punch, Add a pay code and approve time card. Right click on the employee's name on the time card to display an info box. The box gives you info such as payroll, accrual profile, employment terms, primary account, and manager. Exception edits. The time card policy review for following exception edits. Timekeeper should have a detailed email from the employee stating reason edit is needed. Timekeeper should add detailed comments when editing the time card. All time reporting documents, including emails asking for edits, need to be saved for three years. Never delete or edit time without detailed reason from employee. Email timerep at gbu.edu if you see hours that are not for your department. Contact your HRSD and time rep at gbu.edu if you think there is time abuse. Non-exempt timekeepers should be clocking using the TRS time stamp feature. Time card indicators. Hover mouse over indicators and time card and objects to see a tooltip containing details where applicable. Right click a cell within a widget. In many cases, this opens a call out with detailed information and icons for any questions you are allowed to perform on that cell. Editing Miss Punch Exceptions from Genie. Check alerts at the top of your workspace. Common alerts are for missed punches and long intervals over 16 and a half hours. Confirm Miss Punch Day and Time. After confirming a punch time, select employee's name in the Genie. Select the timekeeping button and select Add Punch. It will bring up an Add Punch box. Enter time and military time. Add the day, time, and comment, and secondary transfer if needed. Select Apply. Edit Miss Punch Exceptions continued. Adding punch using Add Punch option from the Genie replicates the TRS system punch and lets the system decide where the punch should go. When you go back into the time card, the time will be inserted with a comment code. You now see the 1605 and a little blue bubble that represents the comment code. Any missed punch exceptions from the time card. Right click on the cell. When you see a missed punch, you will see a red box cell, which indicates the missed punch. Select Edit. Enter time is military time, or enter P after punch to convert PM. Select OK.
The punch now appears in the cell at 1605. Your punch has now been added. Adding this punch exceptions. If an employee forgets the timestamp, the next timestamp will be posted in the next available slot. The timekeeper can resolve this by selecting the last punch that was posted incorrectly and execute an edit punch command that will move it to the correct in or out punch position. In this example, Abraham Lincoln forgot to clock in and his next punch of 1729 went to the in punch. If an employee misses a punch, the next punch will go to the next available slot, and it will make their shift look off. Select Edit on the cell. From Override, select Out Punch, In Punch, or New Shift. In this case, the 1729 should be an Out Punch. So we select Out Punch, and we select OK. By doing this, you can see that it moves the 1729 to the out punch and corrects all the rest of the punches. And they fall into the correct spots, leaving the missed punch that the employee missed. Now you can contact the employee slash manager and ask them what the punch was supposed to be on 925. Ending long interval exceptions. The Kronos rule. The out punch belongs to the day of the in punch, so if an employee forgot to clock out, their next clock in will appear as the out punch for the prior shift, resulting in a long interval exception. Look for long daily shifts. In this example, the employee has 32 hours for one day. Verify a long interval exception. If a long interval is correct, you can mark the exception as reviewed. Select Quick Actions. Select Mark, Unmark to mark the exceptions as reviewed. You will see in the picture that the exceptions are red. When you hover over them, you can determine if the exceptions are long intervals or meal breaks. If you hover over the one at the bottom, you will see it's 28.5 hours. It will say long interval. Let's say we, the manager uh, says that the employee worked a double long shift because there was a water main break and they were asked to stay, and he's going to mark it as reviewed. He can select mark as reviewed. He can mark that, and it turns green. Now if somebody goes into the time card instead of seeing red, they will see green, which means the manager came in, refused the hours, and for anybody that looks at it, they're saying that it has been reviewed by the manager and the hours are okay. Exception marked and reviewed. Comments. Add comments for all edits. Right click on cell to activate the comment box. Comments should be to the point and of a business nature. Select your comment, add a note, select OK. The comment feature will allow you to add on additional comments and additional notes. Right click on the cell. Select comments, the comment box will come up. Here you can enter in a comment. If you don't find what you're looking for, you can select other. You can add your comment and you can add an additional note. And you can always come back at an additional time after you select OK, and you can select to add another note and add another note on to your first note. Once you're done, you select OK, and the comment will be added. Chronos generated punch, phantom punch. A phantom punch in Chronos occurs when an employee forgets to punch out for job one and on the same day forgets to punch back in for a job two. Kronos will insert a computer generated purple punch that is called a phantom punch. The cause is a continuous shift from the in punch of the first job to the out punch of the second job or shift potentially causing an overpayment. Right click on the cell to activate a punch actions box. 
select edit. Select new shift. Select OK. By selecting new shift and moving the punch down, this will create the missed punch that should be should have been there in the first place, allowing the punch to be edited and the employee manager to be alerted. System generated notifications. Manager long interval notifications for shifts longer than 16.5 hours in a day are sent out on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Manager missed punch notifications are sent out on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And employee missed punch notifications are sent out every day at 7 a.m. Time off. You can find details on the types of time off and leave at GW in the time off and leave guide on the benefits website at benefits.gbu.edu slash lead absence. When an employee terminates from GW, they are paid out their accrued but unused annual time balance. Sick time is not paid out. Kronos is a system of record for employee time off accruals and usage. Make sure time off is recorded for all employees. For any questions for time off, they can be directed at benefits at timeoff at gb.edu or 571-553-8382. Time off. No entry should be made in the time card to record time off. Time off entries are made by the employee and approved by the manager. Time off entries may be requested on behalf of the employee by the manager and approved by the manager. Time off requests approved for non-exempt employees after department approval due date will not be paid unless a manual timesheet is submitted to payroll underscore pay rec at gwu.edu. Please review time off training on the benefits website at benefits.gb.edu time off learning opportunities. Check time off requests. Confirm non-exempt employees do not have outstanding time off requests that would affect their pay. You can check alerts for submitted requests. If you see outstanding requests that would affect the biweekly pay approval, please check with the employee's manager for the status of approval. Alerts are available at the top of the workspace to alert you of submitted requests. Requests are also available through the My Inbox on the Blue Related Items bar. Time off requests are visible to all timekeepers with access to an org, but only managers or delegates should approve requests. Historical Corrections The university does not allow edits or adjustments in the TRS chronos to pay periods after the departmental due date. Annual and sick time off requests are allowed in prior periods. Payroll services will release the hold on historical time off requests only, generally the day after the departmental due date for the pay period by COB, close of business. A manual timesheet must be submitted to payroll underscore pay rec at gv.edu to adjust any employee's pay, including missed annual and sick time hours. Manual timesheets can be found at payroll.gv.edu under the quick claims slash payroll forms. Secondary positions. Bi-weekly employees of secondary jobs. Employees of more than one position should clock in for the secondary position with a clock code 2 and transfer code to the secondary job. Timekeepers slash managers will not be able to see the employees who have secondary positions with them until they clock in transferring time to their position. If timekeepers see time that is not for their department, never delete hours. Contact TimeRep at gv.edu alerting Kronos admin of hours that do not belong to your position. Timekeepers and managers will not be able to see employees who have secondary positions with the department until the employees clock in transferring time to the department's position. Once the employee clocks in, they will display on the timekeeper's genie. In the transfer column, you will see the transfer code. If the timekeeper still does not see the employee 
You may need additional access. Contact TimeRep at gbu.edu. Additional access can be requested by the Finance Director by emailing timerep at gwu.edu. Adding Kronos Transfer. Transfer codes can be added by using Search from the Transfer column in the Time Card. Right-click on the cell to activate Search and select Search. Fill in the department number and the position number. The position number must have the two-digit suffix added to it or you will get an error. Select Apply. Transfer codes can be added by using the keyboard keys Control plus C to copy and Control plus V to paste the transfer code in a field that has time for your department. So if the transfer code is already there but needs to be added to other fields, then you could use the Control plus C, Control plus V method. Only add transfers for your department. Contact payroll for other departments. Bi-weekly secondary jobs and totals tab. Hovering over the transfer code will display a pop-up box with a description of the org number. Hovering over the labor level string in the total section will also display the same box to assist the timekeeper in determining if the time is charging to the correct count. The third number in the labor string displays the department, and the fifth placeholder in the labor string displays the position number. Totals tab. Select drop down arrow on the totals tab to get a different view of charges. All shows all charges for bi-weekly period. Shift is used if employee has work schedules, you can view charges by shift. Daily is good, you can click each day in the time card and the totals area will show charges by day. Period to date shows charge to date. Monthly employees with secondary jobs. Monthly employees with secondary bi-weekly paid positions will normally have their monthly jobs set up as the primary position and banner. Timekeeper will be able to retrieve the time card from the All Home Monthly Genie. Employee will need to clock in and out hours for secondary position through the phone. Secondary transfer codes will be in the time card to alert the system that multi paid employees have biweekly hours. Time off hours will not be exported for biweekly payment. The time off hours will only be in the time card for accrual purposes. Meal breaks. Confirming meal breaks. Go to Manager Approval Genie to check meal break settings. Any updates to employee's banner record will reset meal break back to default. Default payroll meal break settings with descriptions can be found on the payroll website under time reporting slash instructions. Select the drop down arrow and select Manager Approval. Then you can review the payroll column. Updating meal breaks. Timekeepers have the ability to update employees meal breaks. Meal break instructions can be found at payroll.gbu.edu under TRS instructions. Meal break changes take effect starting the beginning of the active pay period. To access the meal break interface, go to Data Integration. Select a plus sign. Select Data Integration. Select Meal Break Change for Employees. Select One. Follow the detailed instructions at payroll.gvu.edu TRS instructions to change the meal break. Email timerep at gvu.edu if assistance is needed. Select Change, Radio Button, and Run 
this is just the start, and then there's many steps after this. So again, go to detailed instructions, payroll.gv.edu, TRS instructions for the detailed instructions. Reviewing exempt time card. Exempt employees time card. Loaded purple punches in a time card is one indicator of a bi-weekly paid exempt employee. Right-click on name and the info box will display. Any pay rule starting with EX means the employee is a bi-weekly paid exempt. Confirm exempt employee is still actively working before approving. If exempt employee has left the university, submit a termination request to your HRSD. If the termination request does not flow to Kronos, remove time from Kronos. To remove a punch, select cell, highlight the punch, and select the delete key. Once you've removed the appropriate time, select save. Anything again that needs to be saved in the time card, the save button will be in orange. Once you select save, it will turn gray. Holidays. Holidays pre-populate the time card for bi-weekly exempt employees. Holidays pre-populate the time card for non-exempt employees. Employees must be in paid status the day before and after a holiday. Non-exempt part-time employees default in Kronos with four hours of holiday. Timekeepers may need to adjust the holiday per FTE. Heading holiday hours for non-exempt part-time employees. The number of prorated holiday hours is equal to an employee's weekly scheduled hours from Banner divided by five weekdays worked. See table below for examples. Here you will see the scheduled work hours and the holiday probation hours. The holiday hours for non-exempt part-time employees who have an FTE of the 50% must be manually adjusted in Kronos to ensure correct holiday pay is received. If you have any questions about their FTE, you can contact the Benefits Office or email them at timeoff at gb.edu. Editing holiday hours for non-exempt part-time employees. Click the plus sign to insert an additional row. Select pay code cell to display drop down box. Enter an H and you will see holiday, H-O-L. Select H-O-L pay code. Select the amount that you need to enter in. In this case, an example, we put two to add an additional two hours to the default four. Select tab key and the time will be entered. You will see the updated holiday will appear in the total section. So now instead of saying four, it says six in this example. Select save. Terminations. Checking terminations. Select all home term biweekly for biweekly paid employees on the term list. Review hours and approve. If employee worked past termination date, please submit a rehire request to the appropriate area such as student employment or your HRSD representative to ensure prompt payment of hours worked. Employee must be hired into a position for payment. Approving time. Checklist before approving. Confirm there are no missed punches. Confirm there are no long shifts. Confirm there are no phantom punches. Confirm meal break settings. Confirm comment documentation has been obtained for all time card edits. Confirm total section. Confirm time is charging to the correct org slash position. Confirm part-time holidays have been updated if needed. Confirm time off requests have been approved. Confirm there are no exempt employees pre-populated with time after their termination date and confirm employees are approved on all home term by weekly list. Approving employees from the genie. It is recommended to approve from the manager approval genie. Select drop down to access manager approval genie. Select button to select all roles to select all of your employees. Control plus right click your mouse to deselect an employee if needed. 
Select the Approval button. Select Approve Time Card. Select Refresh button. By selecting the Refresh button, then you should see one or higher in the Manager or Approval column. Higher than one can be due to more than one position or multiple approvers for one department. One partial means the employee is new and their start date is not the first Sunday of the biweekly. Approving the time from the time card. Open up time card. Select approve time card button. Select approve time card. The time card will turn yellow once approved by the manager only. Call a full display info message that time has been approved. The time card will turn yellow. The time card will turn green if approved by a manager who is also the employee. And the time card will turn gray if signed off by payroll admin and this freezes time. TR's training is now complete. New users access will be granted access within 48 hours of receiving email completion. TRS quiz needs to be passed and email confirmation of completion to timerep at gb.edu should be sent. TRS form needs to be fully signed and submitted. And if you have not sent in a TRS request form, please send it to timerep at gb.edu. And the TRS access form can be sent, found at payroll.gb.edu under forms. Thank you and have a good day.